Hey, 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 Pitpick here from the CoinOps Discord server, and I uh, thought I'd make a video on a uh, pretty, fairly new build that's specifically really for cabinets, uh, arcade cabinets, uh, that BP has uh, created. It's uh, it's fast, it's fluid, it doesn't have as uh, much to it, it's just basically a very simple build that, for many, many cabinet owners, is probably just all they require. It's mainly main games, there's a couple of uh, SNES and Genesis games in there, but it's mostly main arcade games and it basically uses pretty much HD recordings of the games with the with the bezels uh, as the main focus of attention for each game in the list and uh, I'm going to show you what it looks like uh, but I think it's really really good for people who have a cabinet who just want something simple and easy for users to be able to uh, you know just go through the list there's 500 games in this uh, by default uh, according to the list and the number in the bottom right of the screen when I put it on and uh, I'll come back and show you the options that are available within it um, but uh, let's uh, not waste any time let's get straight into it so it's just called player uh, it's actually the second iteration of it so it's player 2 uh, and it just boots up like this and it's basically uh, HD video recordings of the various games that are in the building you can see in the bottom right corner it's game 1 of 500 you, there's the ability there is the ability to add and uh, take out favourites um, so at the minute 1941 this game here is not a favorite, but if I press um, Let me think I think it's a start button. It adds it to the favorites Yeah, you can see the little heart in the bottom left turns gold And then if I want to just purely look at my favorites of which this is now one of them I push up or down on my d-pad or uh, left analog stick and it Look, you can see in the bottom right corner, 1 of 51. So there's 51 favourites added to this list at the moment. But if I go back to 1941 and press my start button, it takes that game out of the favourites. And now I'm left with the 50 original favourite games that were in the list. So if I push up again, I go back to the main full game list. Very simple, very easy. And it looks lovely. It looks really good. Um... And then if I want to scroll, I don't want to scroll left to right just by holding down. If I use my left button and right button on my Xbox 360 pad that I'm using, uh, you could allocate that to a different button in your setup. You can scroll to the letters of the name of the game that you want to play. So you might want a game in the S. And then, of course, you just have to scroll with the D-pad or the left analog stick to go right or left or whichever direction you want to go. So you can pretty much um, get to any game you want in this build fairly quickly. This is not built for games, uh, full collections. I mean, I mean, why would you want to scroll through potentially thousands of games before you find again the one you want? You know, find the one that you want. That's just ridiculous. That's just silly. This is built for cabinets. This is built for users who've got very small curated sets. And 500 games is probably more than enough for a lot of people anyway for their arcade cabinet. Most of which, probably a lot of them are already in this build. So um, I'm not going to go through all 500 games. But there are plenty of them, and as I say, some console games for SNES and Genesis or Mega Drive, as it's known in Europe, and um, and so on. So the, it just looks absolutely gorgeous. But it's very quick and it's very easy. So pushing up or down on the D-pad brings you in and out of favourites list. Very easy to get to it. And you press start button to add. So if I Black Tiger's already, this is the favourites list. But if I go to uh, Zombies Ate My Neighbours, which is a SNES game, if I wanted to add that to my favourites, press the start button. And then it's in my in my uh, favourites. But if I go up on my D-pad to get my list of favourites, you can see now that Zombies is in it. But if I press start while I'm in the favourites, it takes it out and reverts me back to the main list of the favourites. Absolutely awesome. What a great system to add and to take away favourites uh, from your lists. Now then, um, I think that's the 500 games. So I'm not, I'm not going to go through all the games. It's pretty much what you'd expect in a 500 build. Uh, 500 game build of coin ops looks lovely it's basically this is how it will look for all the games it shows the bezels uh, these are not the realistic bezels these are uh, the artistic bezels that the uh, coin ops team bp and others have created so um you know well done to all of those in, in that team i've not contributed to that because i'm not really an artist so uh without further ado, i'm going to come out uh at the minute i think i've got the realistic bezels enabled so if I just, I don't know, let's go to my favourites. Let's go to, I don't know, Bubble Bobble. 
I'm going to go to the realistic bezel for this. Let's just see if it comes up with the realistic bezel. I think I've enabled the realistic bezels in the uh, advanced folder. Yes, and that's the realistic bezel there, which you can see there. So press the select button or back button on my uh, D-pad and press start and I can start my game. So uh, I'm going to come out of that. I'm going to go back to player two. It's really good. It's dead easy to add your own uh, games if you wanted to as well. All you need to do uh, to do is add your uh, game to the collections, the ROMs or games collection folder. It will then appear in the list, but then all you would need to do is start the game in main and um, hopefully add a, um, a bezel and then record that uh, gameplay using OBS Studio. I've made a video for how to do that uh, if you want to in full HD. Now that would be 4 to 3 ratio, so it would cut off the bezel, but you just change it from 1440 by 1080 to 1920 by 1080 recording, just full widescreen HD, and then it will record it with the gameplay with the bezel as well, like this does, like this has. So that's it, that's all you need to do, and you can call 30 seconds, and then rename that video to the name, match the ROM name, you're done. Easy as that. Um, and you could do that for any game, for any system, in any emulator, if you didn't have to just be MAME, Genesis and... Uh, Mega Drive or uh, SNES, it could be anything as long as the emulator is included and so on, but it's up to you. But it's that easy. So uh, I'm just going to come out of this now and I'm going to show you the um, various back files that can uh, adjust the settings for you. Um, obviously, if it doesn't display video or have sound, you do need to go to fixes when not working and install these, uh, these things as well. Uh, but in advanced configs, Gives you all of these. You'd need to run these before playing it. You've got four to three aspects if you want to run it on a four to three aspect ratio of display. Second screen can be enabled for a marquee. You've got it on 16.9 standard um, widescreen. Um, you've got various a uh, trap mode, dim or dis enable or disable. Auto scroll can auto scroll. I presume the game's going across as you're leaving it on a trap mode. You've got artistic bezels, you've got realistic bezels, you've got wall, which is the clear, and you've got a wall dark. I might actually enable that and have a quick look. And it's just copying some files for me. So I'll have a look at that in a minute. So bezels wall. I'll have a look. See, I think it's the wall from um, Retro Arcade that uh, displays between the... Uh, that's just on the side of the games. So we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then you've got uh, cabinet mode. And that's to, if you've got a cabinet, you can disable it if you want to run it like it was just a normal PC or some of, some other unit. Uh, but if you want cabinet mode, you can enable it. So it, um, you can merge the console games into all the lists or you can split them so it's console separate from the main games. You've got um, default controls, unlocked if you want to customize your controls or if you want to lock it as it is, just double click uh, locked and it does it. You've got a favorite highlight. You can either, favorite, uh, either enable favorites or disable them there. And then you can have you can clear all your favourites there and have none, or you could have up to 150. And I think these will be chosen. I'm guessing these are chosen by BP and the team. Um, but either way, uh, you could double click that and it will create that faves faves list for you. You've then got various glass effects to enable or disable. You could then enable to quit a coin ops. You could have it with it. It's a keyboard kit press or the controller. And the controller are both enabled, or you could just make it the keyboard only. So in your cabinet, unless you have the keyboard available, your users couldn't quit out of coin ops. Uh, quite useful if you've got a cabinet that. Uh, you've got various scan line effects. You could disable the scan lines, of course, and then you've got disable. Uh, sorry, shut down button. So you can have that disable. So again, your users can't shut down your um, your cabinet. Uh, you could have it where the shut down button enables. If it's enabled, just shuts down Coinops, but reverts you to Windows. Or you could actually get the shutdown button to actually shut down your PC altogether. And then you've got your usual delay, zero delay encoder, enable and disable. Because if some for some users are found with zero delay encoders, that the game list just keeps spinning or rotating even when it's disconnected. So you might need to enable that to get rid of that issue. Um, it's not a Coinops issue. I think it's just the way these uh, zero delay encoders seem to enact. Uh, uh, with USB controls. Anyway, so those are most of the, if not all of them, really. Um, but I've just um, um, just done the bezels wall uh, dark. I think it was. Let me. I'll do. I'll do the clear. I think I did that before. But I'll just do it again. 
and then we'll have another look right so let's have a look at play two and see how it looks now when the games are being played because the the front end won't change you know the graphical interface with the games won't change because you can see that's not changed but if i go back to uh what game was it i can't remember what game i actually enabled before uh was it in the favorites Oh, you know what? I'm just going to go to 1943 because that's actually showing the artistic bezel. So let's just see if it shows the realistic bezel and if the wall is clear or wall shown. Yeah, you can see it there. So there's an artistic bezel, but it's got wall on the left and right sides of the of the screen, so it's not clear. So it looks like the machine or the, the bezel is up against the back of a wall of a maybe an arcade or something like that. So that's nice. So if I go out of that, come out of that, I'll go back to 1943 and I'll just look at the... Uh, advanced configs again and I'll do the bezels wall I'll do bezels wall dark this time I think that the wall will still be there but it'll be far less prominent when you're playing the games so if I go back to player and just start 1943 it should be easy to see the comparison then did I double click that? I can't remember if I did let's see yeah it's coming on now no, I didn't double click it. Uh, 1943. And you can tell it's in the favourites, even though I'm not in the favourites list, because if you look in the bottom left of the screen, the heart is highlighted. So it's telling you, without being in the favourites list, that that game is in your favourites. If I go to the next game, which is still in the favourites, but that one is not, 19XX. So you can tell that one's not in your favourites list. But all the games that are in your favourites list will have an, an, outer, an outer golden heart. Uh, anyway, let's go back into that and see how it compares to last time. The wall was quite prominent in the background. I've, yeah, it's been darkened, and there's so is the realistic bezel as well. Okay, so uh, I know what I need to do. I need to update um, because it's got the artwork there. So, yeah, the artwork's got a slight line going across the realistic bezel. I know why that is. I need to update the... Uh, I need to update the... Uh, uh, the update there, so that's fine. Right, so... Cool, I like it. This is perfect for cabinets. Absolutely perfect for cabinets. If you've got a cabinet with just, you know, and all you want is a simple build for users to not be destroyed, not not change any of your settings, anything. This is going to be probably for you. Um, please, please, please give the video a like, a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, I, I, I encourage you to subscribe because anything that gets updated in the Coinops builds, I will try my best to make a video and update users on that. Um, I've got this build as well as all the others. And even though it's not something I'm going to because I don't have a cabinet, uh, it's definitely one I would definitely use if I wanted to take it something like this to my to a, to a house, to a friend's house or something and play. Just plug it in and play because it'll work. It'll just work. Um, so yeah, it's a Windows. It's for Windows PCs. It's not for uh, Linux and it's not for Raspberry Pi. Uh, although I think, I believe there are things in the pipeline for those at the moment. So for those who've got those systems, it could be a, a good introduction to the CoinOps family for you. Anyway, Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. Uh, I wish you all a happy new year for 2022. Uh, I am on the mend after getting the dreaded lurgy and I hope to be fully fit and well soon. All right. Take care, everybody. All the best. Bye-bye.